Before I begin the video for today, I'd like to draw your attention to a web page called Learning from Experience, or LFE, and you can find that at www.lfe.com. But uh, I have several videos uh, available on this website, so take a look at that. And I have all of my Atlas Craftsman lathe courses on LFE, so have a look. Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to uh, measure cutting feet per minute on the lathe and the bandsaw using uh, Sterrett speed indicators or RPM counters. But uh, in order to do that, we have to use the Sterrett uh, wheel. And I, made, I have a homemade one here, which I'm going to talk about. But the wheel has to go onto the end of the speed indicator in order to to get a reading directly without having to do uh, formulas. So I've got two different uh, uh, models here of the Sterrett. This uh, nice one here, one of my uh, YouTube friends from down in St. Louis just sent me, so that's a nice unit. This is a page out of the Sterrett catalog showing their model 109 surface speed attachment for speed indicators. So it's nothing more than a little wheel, but more than likely not too many of you have these, but uh, most of you will probably have one of the Sterrett speed counters because they made those probably by the millions. I did not have one of these, so I made one. All right, here's the homemade one. It took about an hour to make, and that's it's made out of Delrin. Could be made out of anything, but... Uh, this is so easy to machine, that's why I use Delrin, and that piece happened to be about the right size. And then I had to make a little arbor, and onto the arbor I fastened one of these uh, little adapters that come with these, these Sterrett uh, indicators. That's a little rubber plug that pulls right out of there. Now I had to determine the diameter, because we want the outside diameter to be exactly six inches. In other words, the circumference, not the diameter, but the circumference rather, needs to be six inches exactly. And I have a little o-ring in there, and the purpose of that o-ring was, of course, to act as a tire. If I would have had one of the Sterrett wheels on hand, I would have just measured the diameter of it, but in order to uh, determine that the diameter was one point 910. I uh, just needed to do a little math and and of course the formula for circumference is uh, pi d but I had to find the diameter so I just did a little simple uh, algebra here and determined that the diameter equals 6 over pi or 1.910 so that's the math for that when you take the reading for one minute off of your speed indicator with the wheel on there, you have to divide it by two, and that's the way Sterrett designed us. So the number of revolutions read on the dial is then divided by two to obtain the surface speed in feet per minute, since two revolutions of the wheel equal one foot. Well, I could have made a wheel this size, and then I wouldn't have had to do that division. But as you can see, that almost would overpower the, uh, the indicator to have a wheel that size. So I stuck with uh, the way Sterrett designed it. But in order to get around that little bit of a math there where they said dividing it by two, I'll take my reading in a half a minute or 30 seconds. And then the math is already done for us. And we can cut the time in half that it takes to take the reading. So remember that now as we go over to the machinery. If there's anyone that actually desires to make one of these, this is the O-ring that I use, and that came from Ace Hardware. And it's uh, 1 and 7 eighths by 1 and 5 eighths by eighth inch O-ring. I'm ashamed to say made in Taiwan, but that's the O-ring that I used. And of course there's a little groove in there so that the final diameter was... 1.910 and this will fit right on to the end of the 
indicator. Now it's ready to use. I do plan to do a video on cutting speeds and feeds and so on and I have not really done that so I might be getting the uh, horse or I should say the cart be for the horse uh, doing this video but uh, in general for steel common mild steel 100 feet per minute is a typical cutting speed that you need and that's assuming you're using high-speed steel and oil and so on but depending on the finish and, and the exact alloy and the type of tool it's, it's going to vary from that but that's in general what we want it for steel one, about a hundred for aluminum it can be machined um, almost twice as fast at anywhere between 200 and 300 feet per minute and that can be looked up in books and charts but that's what we'll be talking about today, those speeds. I'll start this demonstration on the bandsaw. And I know I've done this before in one of my other videos, but I did it with a different type of, of instrument. So we're, we'll use the stair here. And I know this is a little unsafe here. We've got a lot of uh, blade exposed, but I'm being careful. And I do have uh, a clock handy, and I'm going to go exactly uh, a half a minute. And I'll be watching this with uh, literally one eye and, and the speed counter with the other. And I have already zeroed the speed counter out. And most of these can be adjusted like this with the little dimples here. So I line up those two little, I should say they're pimples. And I'm going to run that on the back side of the blade away from the teeth being careful not to uh, cut my uh, o-ring. Okay, I'm waiting for the second hand to come to 12, and there it is. And I've got the wheel rotating on the bandsaw blade, and I'm watching the little indicator. That's 50. Remember, I'm doing this for just 30 seconds, so, and that's uh, 100, alright, and I took it off at exactly 30 seconds, and it came around almost to uh, the next 50, so that was a total of 150 surface feet per minute that the bandsaw blade is running at right now. And I keep it at that same speed because I cut wood and uh, different kinds of metal, so that's a good overall speed for a, band, a metal cutting bandsaw, although I do use it sometimes for wood. And that's how to check the speed on a bandsaw, but be very careful of the teeth. This machine has step pulleys, so I have to uh, pull it away from the wall and uh, change the step pulleys in, in order to change the speeds. I'm at the closing lathe now, and the closing lathe happens to have the variable speed, which is a nice feature. Now, if we're going to check the uh, RPM, we would use the indicator into a center hole like this. But, of course, we're not checking RPM today. We're checking feet per minute. So I'm using the other uh, steroid indicator with the wheel. And I think I'm going to use my watch. This is half-inch diameter stock. We are set, according to this, at about 800 RPM, so we'll see what our cutting feet per minute is. Here we go. Alright, and I'm going to time it for exactly 30 seconds. Minute, which means we don't have to divide like it tells you to in the steroid instructions. Alright, we're at 50. Twenty-five seconds. There's 
30 seconds. I take it off. And we are at 90. So that speed is uh, 90 feet per minute, 90 surface feet per minute, which is just a hair slow. So if I would jack that up to about 850 or 900, I'd be at about 100 RPM. And so that's pretty good speed for the steel. I now have three quarter inch stock. That's fifteen seconds. That's a half minute. And you can see that I've gone around uh, a little more. It's 160 feet per minute when I change the stock to a three quarter diameter. So you can see how the diameter of the work greatly changes the speed. The larger uh, you, the work, the faster uh, the cutting speed is if the RPM remains constant. I'm at the drill press now and the uh, speed indicator could be used on a drill bit, although it might be a little dangerous. Remember you can't use it on the chuck, it has to be on the drill bit itself and you would want to do it on the shank portion where there are no flutes. And uh, this would work, I'm not going to do this, uh, but uh, you know that's how you would do it. And you could check. The cutting uh, speed of any drill bit by doing that. And that gentlemen is how you uh, measure cutting feet per minute using the wheel. If you just use the bare shank like this in the center hole it's RPM. Hope this little demo was useful and helpful to you home machinists. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.